the world has changed, the threats have changed, so has NATO. We need and we will have a strategic concept that takes account of today's realities and tomorrow's challenges as well. As NATO prepares a vision for its future direction, this provides an opportunity to change not only what NATO does, but also how it does it. This organization is in dire need of reform. We're now in a situation where we need the Secretary General to be empowered with some discretion uh, over people, over funds, and the ability to to really pursue the, the path that the strategic concept sets out. Some have already targeted the bureaucracy at NATO as a key area needing change. When you have 400 committees to run what is in essence one council, uh, you've got a problem. Do we really need all the committees uh, that, that all the NATO insiders uh, have to sit in every single day? The answer is probably not, because the fact that they have to go to 17 different meetings every given day means that they have that much less time to actually sit back, uh, relax and think through uh, their, their positions on the major issues of a day. So fundamental reform, re-looking at how this organization does business in a very different world in which the need for agile and quick decision making based on quality analysis is very high on the agenda, ought to be part of what we're trying to do. We can't continue to do business as usual. And the concept could help NATO become again a place, or the place, where key discussions and consultations take place. We stopped using NATO as a forum for political consultations. We simply assumed that we disagree so vehemently that it makes almost no point to go to Brussels and try to arrive at a consensus. The second major consequence of the schisms has been that we don't spend enough money on NATO because, because we don't feel the, the alliance is actually ours, because we don't feel that it's addressing our threats, because so many other allies have such diverging visions for what NATO should be. NATO has lost its function as being the key transatlantic forum for uh, discussion on strategic concerns, threats and interests. One of the things we would like to see happen in NATO is that this becomes a body that once again becomes the place in which the member states take their concerns for international security, start discussing them, consult about how to act and perhaps even forge joint actions. The strategic concept should make one point absolutely clear. The alliance isn't just a place where we agree common military standards and from which we command operations uh, when and if we get to, we cross the threshold into, uh, into launching a mission. It should also make clear that NATO is, is first and foremost a political body in which we do actually sit down and talk not just about those threats and, 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 and concerns that might cross the Article 5 threshold, but also a whole range of other things that, uh, that trouble us. So what are the main areas that the strategic concept could change in NATO's makeup? The first one is the proper balance between the operations and second, the proper balance in views uh, among the bigger and smaller countries to make sure that this is our strategic concept, that each member state can identify itself with this document. That's very, very important. The most important thing it is, uh, it has to do is to uh, to reactivate the transatlantic grand bargain, which we had over decades in the Cold War. The North Americans, Canada and the US do something for the Europeans and the Europeans do something for the Americans. One thing you would want to be very careful of is, is not uh, creating sort of first tier and second tier citizenship within NATO. We're all in the fight together, so to speak. We're all in these operations together. The, the nature of the threat being what it is these days, um, it is a 360 degree battlefield. And what could this mean for relations with partners? For example, how could it impact on the NATO-Russia Council? I think that we have to reinforce it seriously and not by bureaucrats, because uh, to the best of my knowledge, people whom I met in, in both embassies in Brussels, one in NATO embassy and another one EU embassy, they are qualified, good diplomats. What we need is a lot, of, a lot more of young, very well-educated, Western-trained, in terms of legalities and uh, experts. But this cross-fertilization should take place now. And I can tell you that if we do it the same way in NATO-Russian negotiations in the Council, and in the EU-Russian negotiation on the cooperation and partnership agreement, we will also reach better results.